Hello, my name is Will Martin. Thank you for joining us for today's Young Professionals Network virtual gathering. These meetings are usually hosted at CHAR, but due to COVID-19, our leadership team felt it was necessary to host this online. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about YPN. Uh, YPN is just a branch uh, ministry of YBL. Um, as you'll see here in a few minutes um, at the YPN events, speakers are brought in. They talk about challenging topics uh, with biblical principles that are usually tied into those. Um, it's been very beneficial to my life and my spiritual growth, both as a husband and a father and um, in our business environment as well. Um, at this time, Andrew Ritter will now introduce our speaker. Thank you, Will. Uh, it is my honor and privilege to introduce our speaker today. Fortunately for you guys, I am not the speaker, so don't worry. You, I will not be wasting your time in that regard. Um, the man uh, who will be speaking to us has done a phenomenal job of leading this ministry as the president of the board, and so we've experienced a lot of growth and a lot of success, and a lot of people have been impacted with his leadership. So we're excited to have Doug McDaniel um, speaking to us today. As we we're meeting and deciding on what topic to cover. We talked about a lot of different topics. Um, we settled on managing your finances during a time of crisis. Uh, we felt that during this COVID-19 season, uh, it was a fitting topic for us all to hear as young professionals. As husbands or fathers or in the business world, we're all, whatever role that we play, we may be experiencing a time of a financial crisis right now. Um, and so we hope that Doug will be able to share with you um, about that topic and about what it looks like um, to manage those finances in a way that brings glory um, to God, to his kingdom. So Doug McDaniel is the president of McDaniel and Register Incorporated and EFP Advisors Incorporated, a registered investment advisory firm. In this capacity, Doug and his team work with individual clients and 401k plans by managing their investments and helping them reach their financial goals. Doug is currently chairman of the board of Young Business Leaders in Jackson and has served as chairman of the board of Jackson Preparatory School. Doug played a role in the founding and growth of a number of nonprofit organizations in Mississippi, including Crown Financial Ministries, now Compass, Young Business Leaders of Jackson, and the Mississippi Center for Public Policy. Doug has served on the University of Mississippi Business School Advisory Board. In addition, he has served as an officer on the boards of the Metro YMCA and the Financial Planning Association of Mississippi. Doug graduated from the University of Mississippi with a BBA in accounting and served as president and treasurer of Sigma Chi fraternity and was a member of ODK. Doug and Ann attend First Presbyterian Church where Doug serves as a deacon. Doug and Ann are the parents of three children and four grandchildren. Um, guys, before I bring Doug up um, to begin his presentation, I'd like to begin with a word of prayer. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to gather together virtually. Although we do wish it was in person, Lord, we're, thank you, we're thankful for this technology and the opportunity to, to meet virtually and to worship you virtually, Lord. I thank you for this ministry and all it means to, to so many people, Lord. And uh, we thank you for a guy like Doug has given his time to, to uh, speak in your name, Lord. We ask that you would use Doug um, use his wisdom to have an impact on all the listeners today. And uh, Lord, just forgive us all our sins and bless this time. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Uh, Andrew, thank you. I appreciate the introduction. And um, I'm really just honored to be a part of this gathering. Um, sorry we can't be together in person. Uh, but when uh, I visited with Andrew and, and Will and they... Um, asked me to speak on this topic. I was humbled. Um, most of what I've learned about uh, managing personal finances, uh, I've learned the hard way. And in fact, I want to share some of those stories with you today. But uh, no doubt some of you tuned in are uh, facing uh, very difficult times. You know, Some of you no doubt have lost a job. Uh, others perhaps have been furloughed, uh, or maybe you've just seen your income go down significantly. Maybe you maybe you have a spouse that has lost a job. I mean, this is this is crazy times. And so, um, I I wish a twenty or twenty five minute talk we could solve all those problems. Um, 
But that's, that's not going to be possible. I do hope, though, that uh, sharing with you some of what I learned uh, through some difficult times will help you at this time. Um, it's great to have a, a group of uh, men that you can come together with. Um, if some of you are involved in small groups to, to work through and flesh through these issues, um, I have found personally that is a, a valuable tool for, for, for my own spiritual growth. So, um, again, uh, my disclaimer is I'm no expert, but hopefully you can learn from, from what I've learned. So let me just, um, uh, just start into it. You know, there have been, I've taken a keen interest in articles written about, you know, what's going on uh, related to finances and the, and the pandemic. The, uh, there's an article in the Clarion Ledger just uh, at the end of May uh, entitled Pandemic Upends How We Work and Spend. And uh, obviously, you know, we're facing, what, 20 percent unemployment? It's just, it's unheard of. Uh, but, but no doubt you have made some adjustments. Um, you know, you don't go out to eat. Maybe, maybe you had a trip planned, you don't, you don't go on. Um, it has dramatically uh, impacted the way we spend, and, and we're kind of learning to live uh, without some things that we got used to. Um, there, was a, there was another article uh, from the Wall Street Journal, June 1st, and it's entitled, What Quarantine Can Teach You About Spending and Happiness. And this was an interesting article because, um, you know, there's a certain standard of living we think we need to be happy. And uh, in a lot of cases, that's, that's changed and that's been challenged. And, um, you know, again, spending is way down, uh, unemployment is up. And so this pandemic, uh, whether it's affected you severely financially or, or, or not, not as severely, um, has really caused us to kind of have to hit the reset button. Um, so with that, I just want to lead into a... Uh, to just uh, you know, apologize for talking about myself, but hopefully you can learn from my mistakes in some cases, or our mistakes. Uh, but let me just take you back to a time uh, when I was younger, uh, 30 years old. Um, I was in a small group study, so just backing up a second, I became a Christian uh, late in my high school, high school, late in high school. Um, I was really discipled for the first time, uh, that is, you know, in a small group, reading the Bible, learning what the Bible says, uh, really when I got to college. And uh, so when I came out of college, I, uh, my Ann and I, my wonderful wife of 38 years, uh, Ann and I married and began our life together as, you know, new, newly married and and we were Christians, and um, so that being said, um, let me push forward to age 30. I'm in, a, I'm in a Bible study with a group of guys. This Bible study actually is meeting uh, at night in my house once a week, and the reason is because the leader was a guy who would drive up from uh, Mandeville, Louisiana. Um, the organization was really much like YBL. Um, it was an organization called CBMC, Christian Business and Men's Committee. Victor Smith started it years ago in Jackson. And so Barry would drive up from uh, Louisiana once a week. Uh, this group of men would get together, we would study, and he would leave the next day. And it just so happened he stayed at my house. So um, Barry was particularly excited about uh, the study of the parables. And um, so it came the week for us to study the parable of the rich fool, and um, this is Luke chapter 12. Uh, I won't read it, but the long and short of the story is that, uh, you know, he, he wondered uh, what, what was he going to do uh, because his crop had been so bounteous that he was, you know, needing to build more barns and more barns, and, and, uh, and, and yet uh, the counsel that he received is, you fool, um, you know, who, who, will, who will own what you have, um, you know. And it was really just a, uh, a warning about hoarding. And so I remember we're sitting in my den in our recently acquired home, which was bigger than the previous home, 
Um, and Barry looks around my den and says, you know, let's, let's talk about this. You know, I mean, how much is too much? And he looks around my den and he says, is this too much? And I remember f kind of bowing up, feeling a little bit defensive, like, you know, is this guy calling me out? I mean, what's, uh, what's going on here? And I realized uh, then that, uh, that, that maybe my perspective on finances wasn't quite right, right, because let me just say this was the third house we had owned in eight years of marriage. Uh, it was bigger than the house we owned before, which was bigger than the house we owned before. So every time I would uh, experience growth in income, I uh, would buy a little bigger house with a little bigger mortgage. And, and um, you know, I, I understood biblical teaching about tithing, and that, we'll talk a little bit more about that. That can be a, quite a challenge. I understood that, but the other 90%, hey, that's mine. Uh, at least that was my perspective. Um, and so, um, like many of you, I'm, I'm sure I, I'm a competitive person. Um, you know, you're young and you're early in your career and you want to succeed and, you know, sometimes uh, evidence of that success, at least in the world's eyes, is, you know, where do you live, what do you drive? I was, uh, I, I had been a Christian long enough to know not to, be, to, to act overtly worldly. But uh, honestly, I, I, we were sort of caught up in that, you know. There was a guy named Pat Morley. Uh, he wrote a book that was popular back in the day called Man in the Mirror. And uh, the first chapter is entitled The Rat Race. And, um, you know, it, it's, a great, it's a great book. Uh, I found it very convicting. Pat defines the rat race as pursuit of the beautiful, wrinkle-free life. Um, he says, there are no winners, and it takes a heavy toll. And, and at this stage of my life, I could relate. I was beginning to uh, really feel convicted about, uh, you know, as a believer, am I to be running this race? And, and uh, at the time, we experienced a recession. I uh, was in the investment business then and am now, but saw kind of the first big dip in my earnings. Uh, we were living in a, you know, 35, this was big back in those days, a 3,500 square foot house on three quarters of an acre there in Bell Haven. And, uh, you know, it, it looked like something was going to need to change. So anyway, uh, I had heard of a of a study uh, called Crown Ministries, and it's still around today. It actually goes by the name of Compass. Um, but it was a, a biblical study about how to handle money, and um, that really intrigued me. And uh, I was feeling stress, and, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, there was a term uh, called DINKS, D-I-N-K-S, dual income, no kids, and and uh, and then subsequent to that, there was a there was a term sitcom s i t c o m, and that's that's what we were single income three children outrageous mortgage. That's that's the world I found myself in, and I put myself in it. Anyway, back to back to this biblical financial study. I called. I looked up uh, this Crown Ministry. I called and. Uh, they're based in Orlando. I talked to a lady on the phone. I said, listen, I'd really like to take this study. My wife and I, we would benefit greatly from it. She said, well, it's not offered in Mississippi. And uh, the only way you could really take the study is to lead the study. And I thought, no, ma'am, I am not the candidate to lead the study. So, um, you know, sometimes the Lord, uh, sometimes, the Lord does have a sense of humor. <laughs> and, you know, when you're desperate enough, you, you'll, you'll go to great measures. So I said, well, what's involved in leading? So I was sent all the materials. I had to go through the study. I had to take the study and show my pastor all this stuff to become qualified to lead. And, uh, you know, five or six months later, we formed our first Crown Ministry group. So what is this? It's a then it was a 12-week study. Now it's a nine-week study. But you, it's, it's in small groups. So we you know, no more than about four or five couples together. You come together and um, 
what I didn't realize is that there are over 2,000 verses in the Bible related to how to handle money. Uh, and they deal with things like debt and spending and ownership and just your perspective. What perspective should you have? Uh, giving. Um, the cornerstone verse of the study is Luke 16 11. It says, uh, if, you, if therefore you have not been faithful in the use of worldly wealth, who will entrust their true riches to you? Which would indicate that if you've not been faithful in how you handle money, you know, how can you expect true riches, spiritual blessings? Um, how we handle money is a barometer, perhaps, of, of our spiritual life. And I, and I found, that, found that very, very convicting. I, I'll share uh, some more uh, about what we learned from that study, but suffice it to say, it was an excellent study, and frankly, <laughs> as a result of that study, um, you know, I joked about outrageous mortgage. We, we could handle the mortgage. We did have the single income, and we did have three children, still do. But uh, we felt like we needed more margin in our financial life, and so we put that house up for sale. So at here, here, here I am, eight, ten years into my career. I've been charging hard. And the for sale sign goes up. And we sold that house, 3,500 square feet, and rented a house less than half the size with three children and two cats. Um, and it was, it was a humbling thing. Um, but, you know, it was very freeing. Uh, I'll never forget that year in that, in that rental house. Uh, it was just an opportunity for us to reset. And, you know, that's kind of what this COVID thing has done. All right, it's given all of us an opportunity to reset and reassess and say, you know, how am I doing in this area? And, and so I'm going to fast forward to uh, story number two. All right, and this one um, occurred February 17th, 2009. Actually at 9.05 in the morning to be even more specific. So, um, I'm fortunate in that this COVID crisis has not impacted me near as much as friends that own restaurants or friends who've lost a job. But I was greatly impacted by this event that occurred in February of 2009. We had sold our investment advisory practice um, a few years prior to that to a group that was building a presence in the Southeast. They had established numerous offices, investment advisory offices, kind of a boutique investment firm. Uh, they had Mississippi connections, um, you know, we did two or three years of due diligence, but in hindsight, uh, I don't know, we obviously didn't do enough, because on February 17th, 2009, at 9.05 in the morning, uh, federal authorities seized the headquarters of this company, which was called Stanford Financial Group, headquarters was in Houston, Texas. In fact, I was on a, uh, a call with the other managing directors around this country and the managing director in Houston says uh, sorry guys I have to go I'm being told there are 50 federal agents in my lobby and he hangs up and shortly thereafter the guy in Memphis says something the same thing and hangs up and that's how it ended that was so um, as it turns out the owner of the company was running a fairly massive Ponzi scheme uh, not all clients were being stole from but clients in a certain investment product were and I own that product personally and had clients that own that product personally, I mean product and uh, mind you now this is on the heels of the, of the Bernie Madoff scandal. I know this all may sound like ancient history to you guys but Bernie Madoff ran the biggest Ponzi scheme ever um, and, and so this, is, this occurred six weeks after that and this is also during the time uh, when the Dow Jones Industrial Average had dropped from about 16,500 to 7,500. So people were already incredibly uneasy. And then you throw in, you know, Ponzi scheme. Well, we had three offices. I was a managing director, uh, $500 million maybe in assets under management. Clients' accounts were frozen. Uh, it was national news. It was headlines in the Clarion Ledger, you know. 
and here you are at 48 years old saying, what, what, did, what is this all about, you know? Employees asking questions, clients asking questions, we don't really have answers. Uh, and, and basically unemployed, you know, two kids in college. So, um, you know, that's probably where, where some of you are right now, <laughs> to some degree, you know, and having to hit a hard reset button. And, you know, I wish I could tell you that, you know, the way uh, I reacted to that uh, challenge was, uh, as any Christian should, look to the Lord, pray, uh, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. I mean, I could quote those scriptures, but uh, it, it, it really wasn't that way. You know, I, I, I just kind of walked around dazed and confused, I think. Um, but I tell you, I read a, there was a book that one of Anne's friends had given us. Uh, it was a devotional book uh, by Derek Thomas on the book of Job. And I just picked it up a month or two after all that. And uh, it was fascinating uh, what I learned uh, as I read that book. And if I could share just a couple of, uh, couple of things I learned from Derek. He, um, he says that um, life's troubles uh, may seem random and purposeless, but they're not. Um, this pandemic. You know, is it an accident? It was not an accident, okay? And so uh, we scratch our head and go, well, that doesn't make sense. How could that be? We, we, we have to remember we're, we're the clay, you know? He's the potter. Um, times like this, we, we should just, you know, walk humbly before him, depend on him, uh, pray, um, and worship him. <laughs> It's strange, right? Worship him. Uh, as Derek says, even in pain, even when your dreams are shattered, even when nightmares become a reality, um, we as believers are called to, to worship him. And so um, it's counterintuitive, isn't it? It's not what you want to do. You know, we're questioning. We're wondering what's going on. I'm 30 years old. I'm, I'm trying to do the right thing, and I do not understand this. And so often we won't understand but you know it's really not important that we understand it's it's important that that he understands and and that we know and that we believe that he understands so um there were a lot of truths that came out of that and so let me if i can just transition a little bit and share with you in the time we have remaining a few um lessons i learned going back to that biblical financial study and maybe a few strategies that would be of benefit to you um I wish so bad we were together in person so um, we could kind of interact on some of this. But uh, So um, I, I mentioned that small group study. Um, two, two verses I want to share with you. One is 1 Chronicles 29, 11, and 12. And, you know, we've, we went through the study. You have to actually memorize a verse uh, to go through this study and repeat it. And then, you know, we led it several times. So anyway... First Chronicles 29, 11, and 12, here's what it says. Everything in the heavens and earth is yours, O Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as being in control of everything. Riches and honor come from you alone, and you are the ruler of all mankind. Your hand controls power and might. It's your discretion that men are made great and given strength. And, and just, you know, there's so much to unpack there, but you know, everything belongs to God. You know, it's not the 90%. It's, it's, it, it's not the 10%. He owns the 90%. And, you know, absent a real change of perspective on ownership, giving and tithing, and, you know, that, honestly, for me, that can be a burden. Uh, but when you realize, oh, no, wait, wait, it's all his. What? What's the big deal about giving a sliver back? You know, I mean, uh, anyway, I think it's critically important to, to process through that. Um, it, is, it is, you know, you are the one that makes great. We, I'm arrogant. I'm prideful. I think I did it. I studied hard. I got these clients. I did it. <laughs> Let me tell you, it can go away at 9.05 in the morning. Um, I mentioned Pat Morley earlier. I love this little poem in his book. He says, money talks, I'll not deny. It spoke to me. It said, 
bye bye. Uh, and and you know there was a time in my life I couldn't relate to that, but I, I certainly can now. He decides, God decides, and so. Um, the other thing I'll just say is there's a, there's a uh, verse in Philippians, Philippians 4, 11 through 13. And this is Paul, and here's how it goes. For I have learned to be content. In whatever circumstances I am, I know how to get along in humble means. I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. So this is the Apostle Paul. And he said he learned to be content. So quit beating yourself up if you struggle with contentment. You know, that's, that's a challenge. Um, the Apostle Paul says we learn that. And we learn that by studying and understanding what the Lord has to say about money. So we could talk for a long time, uh, you know, about budgeting or, or tithing. I want to say one just quick thing about tithing. Once again, don't beat yourself up. Maybe you're not giving at all. Ask God to change your perspective and just start with some amount, you know, and just, just let God uh, deal with you in that. And, and uh, I just encourage you to do that. We, we could talk about debt. Um, but anyway, I think that, uh, you know, as a follow-up to this, there'll be an opportunity if you have, you know, specific questions about your situation, anything, you know, I might could offer or help. Again, most of what I've learned, I've learned by, uh, you know, my own mistakes. So anyway, it's really been a pleasure to be with y'all. I thank you for your time and uh, look forward to seeing you in person. Doug, thank you so much again for sharing with us today, sharing your wisdom and your story and your testimony. I, I know I felt the impact of it and I'm sure all these listeners did as well. Um, you know, guys, uh, it's a sensitive subject. You know, finances can be a sensitive subject in the home. Uh, in this culture we live in, um, we feel like we gotta we gotta have it all together. And we the the world tells us the more money we make, we make, the better we are. And I, I'm reminded in a time like this, and I hope that I know that God is in control and that He is going to use this time for good. And I'm reminded in a time like this that we are not deserving. Nothing about us deserves the income. Um, that we receive or, or the job that we have. We're not, we're not deserving of that. Uh, we're not owed that by any means. Every bit of that is a gift from God and it's from God's grace alone. Uh, I hope that this time, this season that we're in, that we're all, uh, we all realize that. And we all take that and have a different perspective on our finances going forward. Um, it is a gift from God and it is to be used to further His kingdom. And hey, here's the great thing about it is that burden that we feel carrying these finances around, we have a God that wants to carry that burden for us. Um, my challenge for all of you is to turn that burden over, over to Him. It's a challenge for me as well. I want to turn that over and give that over to, to Him because alone I can't carry that burden and I'm tired of carrying it. And I'm sure a lot of us, a lot of you are in that same, same boat. Um, guys, you're, you'll be receiving an email this afternoon with a Connect card. Um, please fill that out. It'll only take a minute or two of your time. Uh, with that Connect card, there will be the opportunity to submit questions, questions that Doug will go through and answer individually. So it's a great opportunity. If Doug didn't cover something that you want to hear about, um, fill that out and ask that question. Also, it'll be an opportunity for you to get involved with a small group if you feel led to do that. I know for me personally, I went to a, a YBL meeting uh, I filled out that card and put that I was interested in joining a group and it has had a tremendous impact on my life. I'm surrounded by guys who hold me accountable. We meet each week and it's truly been um, a tremendous benefit for my spiritual life. So I would encourage you, um, join a group, get involved. There, uh, there are guys in this community trying to walk the same walk that you are uh, and guys that want to get to know you and want to pour into you. So I'd encourage you to do so. Thank you again for your time. Uh, I look forward to meeting in person, um, but we really appreciate you giving up your time and spending it with us today. God bless you all and take care.